The episode begins with San Raku, who sees a giant swamp creature in front of him and is astonished by the power of this massive creature. It appears to be a giant fish called the Muck Digger, swimming in the swamp. One of the unique features of this swamp is that it enforces a one-legged walking condition, meaning you always have one foot stuck in the swamp until the other foot reaches the bottom. In other words, you can't jump with both feet. You have to hop on one foot. Our hero thinks to himself that this is the worst opponent he could face and wonders how he will fight with the swamp impeding his movement. The creature in the swamp stops its movement and begins to dive into the mud, heading towards San Raku. A small rabbit says they will be peeled alive here and starts screaming. However, San Raku tells the rabbit to hold on tightly and starts channeling energy into his leg to enable him to move and evade the creature. He mentions that the experience points from the battle with Lycagon have developed many of his skills, and knowing how to use them will be the key to victory. Suddenly, the monster reappears and tries to swallow San Raku, but he prevents it from doing so using his weapons and begins attacking with his sharp knives. The rabbit remarks that this is truly amazing, but San Raku replies that he only used a couple of skills to get out of that predicament and the real problem starts now. He mentions that the cooldown for his slip and repel moves is 10 seconds for each, so he won't be able to use them again for another 10 seconds, and he doesn't have a way to avoid damage during that time. In a tough situation, another monster appears, attempting to devour San Raku, but at that moment, the rabbit appears with a book and attacks the monster, saving San Raku. He asks her what she did, and she confirms it was indeed magic. Sanraku realizes that he had been focused on playing solo and forgot that he had a partner. He begins to move to confront this monster, even though it's challenging to move in the mud. However, the monster rises before Sanraku gets close and they start attacking each other again. This time, Sanraku climbs onto the monster's back and jumps on it. He tells Amal the rabbit that they will explode it with their combined strength. The rabbit starts casting an augmentation spell and we see that the monster can't touch them because they are standing on its large nose. After throwing themselves far away, the monster begins to open its mouth to devour them, but San Raku realizes that he has taken too long, and the ten seconds have passed. He attacks the monster using his extraordinary ability. At this moment, we see that Amal the rabbit has completed her powerful explosion spell and attacks the monster, causing it to fall into the mud. Sanraku and his rabbit friend also fall into the muck. Sanraku tells Amal that this spell is very powerful and must have damaged the monster significantly. However, when they look around, they can't find the monster. It seems to have gone deep into the swamp. Then, they feel the ground trembling beneath them, and Sanraku realizes that the ground is pulling his foot. Amal explains that the monster emerges from the ground to attack, so they need to find a way to anchor it. Sanraku takes her hand and throws her far away. He is surprised to see that the monster was shocked by his throw and flung into the air instead of being killed or eating him with its teeth. He expected his throw to be lethal but barely caused any damage. It appears that the shark-headed monster has a special attack called the Programmer's Launch. It is used after reaching a certain threshold of life points, and it involves diving deep into the ground and using the swamp to immobilize players. Then, it throws one of these players into the air, causing them to die from the fall damage because they are launched too high. Sanraku thinks to himself that the first throw didn't do much damage, so he will throw himself far away this time. He contemplates what to do and mentions that he has never died in a game like this, and he has completely given up. Amal runs towards him to save him, and it seems like he has resigned himself to his fate. However, Amal activates her magic and saves him from the fall and death, but he is surprised when he lands on top of the giant monster. She explains that this skill is called Meteor Fall, and it allows them to adjust the landing location. The fall is considered a serious attack on the giant monster, leading to its demise as Sanraku rapidly descends on it. Sanraku is overjoyed that he managed to defeat this giant monster and begins to thank Amal, his friend. He expresses how much he suffered here, just as he did with the previous monster, Lycagon. 
They are the survivors this time and have finally managed to subdue the leader of this area, the Mutt Digger. After their adventure, they find themselves on the way back, and San Raku starts eating herbs to increase his life points. He remarks that even the herbs can't restore his life points fully right away. His rabbit friend is surprised that he ate all of them at once, and he explains that it's the only way to get them into his mouth. In his thoughts, Sanraku acknowledges that Amal was much more powerful than he expected and that she was the reason for their victory. He plans to make her work as a good luck charm until she reaches her full potential. Amal speaks and mentions that they will soon reach Thardrima, and after they arrive, she plans to stay in Rabatsa completely. She looks forward to it, but Sanraku raises a small concern about keeping her hidden when they arrive in the town as they attracted attention the last time, which could lead to an attack. Amal reveals that she has a mysterious lethal bracelet that she hasn't used in a long time, which is a secret treasure of the deadly rabbits. She tells him to keep this between them and starts changing her appearance. At this point, Amal transforms into a beautiful girl, stunning Sanraku. He had previously thought he was playing a top-tier Japanese game, but now he's discovering new things within the game. Amal explains that she can only maintain this form for four or five minutes in her current state. Sanraku understands and warns her that if she makes any mistakes, he will punish her. Then, he asks Amal to play a specific role when they arrive in the town. He wants her to act as the unlucky girl who is dragging along a nearly naked birdman for some reason. Amal is quite concerned about this role as it seems like she will fall into the swamp. They finally arrive in the beautiful and vast town called Thardrima, known for its stunning natural scenery. Amal is enchanted by its beauty, while Sanraku, as an experienced explorer, isn't as impressed, having seen many places in his life that were even more beautiful. He explains that adventurers travel to many places, leaving Amal even more amazed and wishing she could do the same. Then, they prepare to enter the town. Sanraku asks Amal to get ready for her transformation to make herself inconspicuous. However, when they reach the town's gate, the guards stop them because Sanraku is almost naked, and they see wounds on his legs. They assume he's a victim of a mugging. Amal speaks to the guards, spinning a tale about Sanraku's tragic past. She claims he was born anew as a mighty warrior and is now battling his destined rival with minimal skills and low levels. She explains that he was eventually cursed and offers a sympathetic portrayal of San Raku as a weak and solitary boy on a journey to lift the curse. She continues to play her part, but the guards are initially reluctant to allow him entry due to his nearly naked state and unconventional appearance. However, two onlookers, a young man and a girl, overhear their conversation. They discuss Sanraku, who is shorter than average, and eventually, the guards agree to let them enter the town. Inside the town, the girl named Inamalia takes Sanraku's hand. He asks her who she is and what she wants, and she introduces herself as Inamalia. She quickly snaps a picture of Sanraku with her rabbit friend and plans to post it on forums to ask veteran players if they've encountered him before. Meanwhile, back in the girl's room, she is seen getting angry and frustrated. She slams her hand on the table, annoyed that tamed companions in the game are typically dogs or cats. The scene shifts to the boy with beautiful hair, who is watching the same message that Animalia sent to various people. Then, we see these two girls in disbelief as they discuss Sanraku's situation. The girl with crimson eyes and short horns is extremely angry and sets out to find Sanraku. The girl continued to search for him everywhere on the city streets. Then, we see that boy with yellow hair also talking about Sanraku, and the information had leaked to almost all the players. It also shifts to the strong boy with oily hair, and they believe that Sanrak fought the legendary monster Lickajon. Based on the information they have, it's possible to encounter Lickajon randomly, but it's unusual for beginners in this game, especially in its early levels. We return once more to that boy, who was very surprised by this message, and it was sent by the girl named Ashurkai. Also, that girl with yellow hair and beautiful eyes talks about Sanrak as a very dangerous player, capable of fighting that. 
Now, we move to the red-haired girl who wants to meet him and get to know him as she has read a lot of information about him, which may have been leaked, but she can help protect him. After that, we see this huge man wearing a large armor also talking about the message, and it seems that Sunrako is now in the spotlight, and he has become very famous at this specific time. Everyone on social media is talking about him. We return to reality, and the girl with short horns holds Sunrako's hand, asking him a strong question. How did he manage to tame a deadly rabbit like that? The biggest shock for Sunrako was when he learned that she knew all this information and was sure that he was with a talking, deadly rabbit that spoke the same language as they did. Sunrako was amazed because this information had leaked. It must have happened when they were in scandal, which is very dangerous. Sunrako needs to act quickly. The girl pleads with him once more to tell her the truth, but Sanrak, given the unique scenario, cannot reveal it. He doesn't know how things will turn out, so he's unsure about what to do now. Suddenly, without any introduction, the girl with purple hair strikes with her sword, but everyone manages to avoid it. She then looks at Sunrako and questions him about how he can hide such dangerous information. Sunrako is surprised by her words because she also knew this critical information. He and the rabbit jump back and summon their deadly weapons. The girl then prepares for a fight and removes the mask covering her eyes, revealing herself as a very beautiful girl named Arthur Benselkown. When Sunrako checks her level, he finds that she is at level 99, a significant difference from his level 28. The question arises, how will the battle between them play out, and who will emerge victorious in this intense battle? The scene shifts to the rabbit leader, and a mole, along with Sunrako, are sitting there all feeling tense. Then, the rabbit, Sunrako's friend, speaks to the rabbit leader and tells him that the time has finally come to show him everything she's got. Her eyes begin to blaze with fire, but in the end, she doesn't do anything. The scene then transitions to a mool in the morning, sitting on a large mound of giant frogs, talking to herself about finding a special place where she can rely on herself and face injustice and enemies. Sanrako watches her from a distance and is quite amazed because she seems to be conversing with a multitude of frogs. With that, this episode comes to an end. Stay tuned for an exciting and mysterious episode featuring the battle between Sanrako and Arthur. Before you exit the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive all the latest updates.